Hey everyone, it's Brittany of BZ Art, and today I'm going to show you how to make my sitting kitty pattern. So this is an older pattern. Um, I haven't looked at it in a while, so I might be doing things a little bit differently or a little bit out of order. Um, but a lot of people struggle, especially with the legs on this one, so I wanted to finally release a video to kind of help people out a bit more. So before I start, as usual, there are birds in the craft room. They're loud. <laughs> I'm hoping that they'll stay relatively quiet, but there might be a little bit of screaming. Um, we'll see. <laughs> so to start, I'm going to do the ears once I find them. So for the ears, I like to just cut out a really big square around them just because it's a little bit easier to do this way for me. Um, it, it's up to you how you wish to do this, but when it comes to little pieces like this, I find this easier. So you're just going to sew around the top of the ears and leave the bottoms open. out. I'm going to turn the ears right side out. I'm going to take the ears and place them so that the shorter edge of this little dash at the bottom here are facing each other and this is just so that I can remember the placement. So I'm going to take them and on that mark I'm going to fold them in on themselves and pin them and then do that in the opposite direction for this ear. I'm going to set those aside and then we're going to do the head. So for the head what you're going to want to do is fold it in on itself at all of the darts here and sew the darts. Um, the darts in, in sewing for plushies pull the fabric together and that's how they create the shape. So by pulling these and pulling these and pulling these you're going to get a rounded shape. So I've already done this for the back side of the head and this is going to be the front side. I'm going to go ahead and cut all this fabric out of the seams of the darts. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the ears. So you're going to want them with the fold onto the right side of the fabric and 
facing this top seam. And there's a mark for that on the pattern. I just didn't put it on here. And we're going to do that with the other one. And then we'll pin the back of the head to the front of the head. So I like to start at the center seam here and make sure they're nice and aligned. And place a pin there. And I just try to align all of these the seams of the darts as best as I can because it's going to give you the best looking plushie when you're done if those are all nicely lined up. It's not a big deal if they're not. I find that most people don't even notice if they're a little bit off. It just looks better. Ouch. And I'm going to start at the bottom here and leave a little bit of space to turn it right side out, but we're going to sew around it. I'm going to trim away my excess seam allowance. I think that my ears slipped a little bit while I was sewing, so if you want to avoid that, just be sure that you use more pins. I don't tend to pin a lot, but I'm using a custom printed minky, which is slipperier than regular minky because it's, uh, it's just a more slick fabric. So then what we're going to do is we're going to make a tiny cut where the nose is and a tiny cut where the eyes are. You can also use an owl and just make holes here, kind of push it open, but mine's over there and I'm lazy, so. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to stick the nose in. Kind of doesn't matter if it's perfect because you can wiggle it around a bit from the front side. And then the eyes. I'm using custom printed pearlescent safety eyes. If you want to custom print eyes, you can just buy clear ones and paint the back with uh, paint. An acrylic paint does a really nice job. I like to trim the posts off of my eyes. I find that this helps them lay flatter into the stuffing, but this is definitely optional. I'm just using wire cutters. And turn the head right side out. I'm going to stop it. And once you're done with that, you're going to use a ladder stitch to close up the opening in the head. 
So for the ladder stitch, you come in from the inside of the fabric and go to the outside. And then you come in from the outside and directly back out. And move to the other side and repeat that in and directly back out. And then you'll just continue along. And it kind of forms the rungs of the ladder. And you pull it tight as you go. So the head is finished and we can go ahead and set that aside. It's pretty cute so far. Next I'm going to make the tail and the feet. So for the tail, again, I've just kind of loosely cut out around it. You're going to put two pieces with their right sides together and sew all the way around, leaving the top open. excess fabric and then we're going to turn it right side out and stuff it. So we're just going to set this aside for later. Next I'm going to do the feet. And just place the pieces right sides together and then sew around leaving the top part open. under there. But it should be fine. And we'll cut around them. Turn them right side out and set them over with the tail. or wherever really, just to the side. So here comes kind of the part that I think most people struggle with. So we're gonna start with this piece here and the front feet. It's gonna be the back side of the front feet. Um, I forget what these pieces are labeled, but you'll just lay these with right sides together and sew from there to there. I like to go in and make just a little clip on the seam allowance to let up some of the tension there. And then I'll cut off the excess down the middle. And now you'll take the long piece of the front of the body here and lay it down with the right side facing up. And then we'll place the right side together here. So I like to start at the feet and I'm going to spin them down. So 
So once you've got these feet, front feet pinned down, you're going to take these edges here and flip them around so that they line up with the sides of the body. Let's see if I can get that closer to the camera. So you take these flaps here, spin them around so that they're going to line up with the edges of the body. that down and another one up here and then the same over on this side just the flap comes around and comes up so again I'll just pin right at the seam to hold it down and come up and around with it And then we're just going to sew around the legs here. Something to keep in mind is that the seam here, make sure none of the fabric is tucked under it. It should all be pulled out. Otherwise you will get a pucker there. And down these front legs, the closer you can sew to this line, the better. The, that they're going to look, um, but you definitely want to leave enough space that you can cut between them without cutting the seam. So when I get here, I like to come up and just make a couple stitches and then straight back. excess seams. And be careful between here that you don't cut into the seam itself, into the thread. And then we'll take the back piece, fold it in on itself at the start, and sew just the seam allowance together. Just a couple stitches. And then you can kind of unfold this like that, like so, and lay them with right sides together so that the feet are just kind of flapping here. And then you'll sew one side and then the other. Once that's done, 
We'll take the feet and you're going to pin them on the inside of the body here. And then you're going to pin the circle of the bottom onto here. So you're just going to kind of set it on there and pin it, <laughs> if that makes sense. I like to start on the side just to give me somewhere to start. And the more pins you use, the easier this is going to be. If it doesn't line up exactly, you can make your circle a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger. Sometimes if you've sewn the sides of it a little a little bit less or more, uh, it can change how much fabric you have at the bottom here to work with. So then I'm going to go ahead and sew around the bottom. You see I have a little bit of extra on there. It's not a big deal. And cut the excess off. Right. The next step is going to be to turn this right side out. Oh, I'm sorry, I lied. We gotta attach the tail. So to do that, I like to stick my hemostats through this open dart in the back of the body, and grab the tail and pull it through. So you're gonna wanna insert it like this so that the curve is facing up, I guess? So it's like a smiley face. And then once you get it in the dart, you're just going to sew up the dart and sew it in. Then we will turn it right side out. So the last step here is, for the body anyway, is to stuff it. And stuffing the body is going to determine a lot of how the legs end up looking on the cat. So how I like to do this personally is I like to stuff the body itself. And you have to do this quite firmly actually. You could also potentially put some weighted pellets in the the, bo in the, the bottom area here that will help it sit a little bit flatter. So once the body is pretty firmly stuffed all on its own, 
I like to go in with my hemostats and stuff these front legs. And what I do is I just take a clump of stuffing and I stuff it down the front of the body here and into the leg. And I do that with both sides. And I try to kind of hold the legs down with this hand so that the stuffing doesn't stick out dramatically. And this is actually, I can see I made a mistake here. I didn't sew the legs all the way to the seam and I should have. It's not gonna make a huge difference in the end, but it is making them stick out a bit weird. So what I like about plush sewing, a lot of stuff that is an accident or a mistake, only you know it's a mistake. Other people don't really know how it's supposed to look. And they don't know that it wasn't a deliberate choice. Alright, so you could call this done if you wanted to. I don't want to. I like to finish it off by pulling the legs in to the body more and pulling the tail to the side. So what I'm going to do for the legs is I'm just going to make a stitch down here on the seam between these two bottom legs. I'm going to come up, in and out of the, that leg, in and out of the next leg, and then back down at this point. And then you pull it tight. And I'm going to do that a couple times to make sure it's nice and secure. for the tail. I like to arrange it about where I want it and I like it to be down a little bit to offer a bit of support for the cat. So I'm just going to kind of place it where I want it. Um, if you haven't done this before you might want to attach the head first uh, so you can get a good idea of what the balance is going to look like. And you can just stuff a couple pins in there to keep it in place. Just be careful not to poke yourself when you're sewing. Right, so I'm just going to go along and ladder stitch where the tail meets the body. final step is going to be to attach the head. So for that you're just going to want to place it about where you like it. You can make it a little bit straighter if you want, but I like it at this nice jaunty angle. And then you just ladder stitch it on. you've finished the sitting kitty sewing pattern. It should sit quite nicely on its own. Success! Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video!